Hey everyone, I'm Liam from Maxon and today I'm going to show you how to create 3D text inside Cinema 4D. So 3D text is a bit of bread and butter work for 3D animation software and in Cinema 4D it's really easy to do and we're going to create this type of text effect here. Um, very simple, um, the lighting is very simple. If I just do you a quick render here, nothing too advanced. Um, but what I want to concentrate on are two objects inside Cinema 4D, the text object, which is used to create the actual basic text shape, and the extrude, which makes it 3D so we can see it in the final render. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm um, just creating a new scene, so I'm starting as you are, hopefully, and hopefully you've got Cinema 4D open. Um, to create the text, we drag on this icon here and pick the text uh, icon here which will, will create a text object inside the 3D scene. Um, you can see that it comes off viewing to the right and that's because to begin with it's set to a line left and it puts the center of the coordinates over here um, and that's like a word processor we typically start with left the line and then we change it. Inside 3D space though it can often make sense to have this in the center because we may want to do things like spin the logo or text around. So to do that, uh, you know, to illustrate the problem, if we pick the rotation tool, you can see rotating at the minute, that's gonna look a bit weird. So if I undo with this tool here, select the text again. If I pick a line middle, now when I rotate, that's gonna make sense. So that's exactly what we want to do. Now, I'll just hit the undo again. Uh, these three icons here are useful. Move up, down, left, right, forwards, backwards, and rotate and they correspond to one, two, three. So there you go, learn that bit and then you can move around as I do here. Okay, so we'll move in a little bit so we can see what's going on. So at the minute, the text object has no polygon information that Cinema 4D can use to create an image from. So if we hit render where Cinema 4D creates a final image, there's nothing there. So we need to combine text in a minute with another tool, which is the extrude object to make a 3D shape. So we'll grab the text tool first. I just want to talk about changing things in here, which is the attributes manager. Um, so for example, if we highlight the word text, we can override that. So I'll type in hello. Hello, very exciting. I can pick a font as well. There's all kinds of fonts um, that Cinema 4D will work with. Not every font will work, it depends. Um, a lot of them will though. So I'll go with Arial, um, just very popular standard font. And you can also pick things like bold, italic, regular. Um, so if we went bold, for example, like that. You can also pick what height you want to work with. So Cinema 4D can work with either very accurate numbers. So you can go to crazy decimal places like we've got here. Um, or you can work by eye. So I personally like to work by eye. You know, I'll say, oh, I want a logo. I want it about that size in the frame and then I'll just render out. Cinema 4D doesn't really mind what size it is, that's up to you. But if you want to work accurately, you can do here. Okay, so going down here, there's different options. There's vertical spacing, horizontal spacing. There's also kerning, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, and various other things like what plane you want to have the text on. So it's currently on the XY. I could have it on the ZY or the XZ, depending on how I want it in my scene. I can also reverse things around and all sorts of weird and wonderful other bits that I'm not going to talk about. But if you're really interested in them, if you right click and choose show help, up will pop the relevant piece of help inside Cinema 4D to tell you about that riveting attribute. Okay, so the one thing I want to point out while we're here is to do with this kerning though. So kerning helps if, if you want to adjust the spacing between letters and then there's also lots of other bits and bobs inside Cinema 4D that you can use. But for example, I could grab these. I'm holding down shift as I click in each one and then I can move these along. Um, which way around do I do it? Do I do it like that? So if I wanted to shove them up so they're a little bit closer to the H and I could also, if I zoom out a little bit, do things like change the size of them. I could pop the height up and down and I can do this individually or in groups so you can grab any ones that you like, like so. And move them around however you see fit and you can come up with, with all kinds of weird and wonderful shapes but still have it as if we click away with one object so as I move the object around it stays in that shape. That's quite a hideous looking text effect I've created so I'm going to use my undos which is command Z or control Z on a PC or you can hit them here 
until we're back to the point where I hadn't broke my text horrendously. Okay, so we've got the text here. You've seen a little, a little bit about kerning. But in this case, I'm not going to bother with kerning. Um, just wanted to show you it's there. And to make that 3D, all I do is drag on this icon here and choose extrude. This adds an extrude object. Now, there's two ways of doing this. If I just do it manually without pressing a button, I then have to drag and drop the object that I want to affect in it, like so, and then it becomes 3D. But a more efficient way, if I undo that, have the text highlighted, and then when you drag and release on the word extrude, hold down Alt on your keyboard, and it will automatically put the active object as a child inside the extrude and make it 3D. So it saves you a step. So that's quite a nice thing to have. So, and there we have, we have some 3D text all ready to go. Looking a bit boring at the minute, but we'll hopefully fix that, make it look a bit more interesting. We're not gonna do a full lighting setup here because that's obviously gonna take time. I don't wanna bore you to, to oblivion in this tutorial. I just wanna talk to you about these two um, tools. Okay, so we've got the extrude here. What can we do with that? Well, one thing that's clear if we zoom in is yes, we have 3D text, but it's quite boring looking in that the edges are extremely sharp. And when you see 3D text in real life, it's normally got some form of rounding on it. You can have it dead straight like that, of course, if you like, but that is to do with caps and rounding. So if you're on the object uh, tab here of extrude, you can change things like the depth. So if I type in 30, it'll get thicker. I'll go back to 20, because that's quite a nice size for this. <coughs> sorry, and then click on the caps and go fillet cap, and you can do it for the front and the back, and then you can you get like a, a step, in this case it is a single step, which makes the cap a bit smaller than the sides, and then the more steps you put in, the smoother that uh, fillet will, will become, so now we're getting that nice rounded text that we see so much in real life and on 3D text that you see on the TV. So I've got my 3D text here, as you can see. And there's one thing that you can hopefully see, which is if I turn off the extrude, it's changed from my original text shape. Um, and that's to accommodate that big old fillet cap that I've put in. Um, and depending on how big that is, you can either manually adjust it here and say, you know what, I've got to adjust that radius down. I've got to do it on the back as well. So you can have different ones on the front and the back, of course. Or the other way I could do it is say, try and give me that. Let's just change those. But try and constrain it in the shape and then Cinema 4D will do its best to try and give you a decent size fillet, but constrain it to the original shape. And sometimes you want that on, sometimes you don't. It just depends. You can get like a blockier looking text by going outside of the original shape, which you might want, you might not. Um, but yeah, just to show you can do it. So I'll narrow that. Uh, radius down slightly. Okay, so I've got my rounded text, and then we've got the shape of the text here, so that's good. And the next thing that we really need is some sort of color on it. I think we've covered everything that's important. Oh no, there's, sorry, there's one more thing I want to talk about, which is fillet type. So the fillet type refers to how this goes from this point to this point, and in this case, convex gives this nice rounded shape. Let's zoom in so we can see what's going on. Um, and if you want to change to a different one, there's linear, which is very boring. It's just a straight line, no matter how many steps you do. There's the convex that we looked at. Concave goes the other way around, which creates quite an interesting effect, like this weird step in. Um, half circle, which I quite like. That's the one I chose in the end. Um, one step, two step engraved is another popular one. So I'm going to go with half circle. Um, and then I'm going to show you one other thing, which is putting materials onto 3D text. Now, of course, I could talk for hours about materials. It can get very complicated, but I want to hit home a couple of very simple points here about materials. First off, if you're starting off inside Cinema 4D and you want some preset materials, go to the content browser, presets, and then depending on what package you've got. So for example, if we went to visualize, um, we could go into materials and there's lots of pre-built materials here, like plastic, for example, a plastic green, and then we could use that, it's already got highlight on, drag and drop that on the object, job done, or, and then just change the color if we want. Or if you want to work from scratch, you can create a material from scratch, and then I can change things. I can work by HSV or RGB or Kelvin, all kinds of weird, wonderful things, but I'll work with HSV in this in this case. HS, HSV, put my teeth in. Um, so there I've got a nice red, um, 
and then we can create another couple of materials. So I'll create another one. This one I'll just keep as white, but I'll just bang up the brightness a bit. And then I'm going to create one more. And oops, you can also double click to open up a window if you wish. Um, you don't have to work down here. And this one I'll pick a blue like so. So I've got my colors here and then to apply them, just make sure you've got the extrude activated and drag and drop it on. So now I've got some white text, as you can see, very exciting. And then if I wanted to apply, I don't know if you can remember, I had a different color face on the front here. And so if I drag and drop the next material on, there's a couple of useful shortcuts you can use for selections when you're working with extrudes. The first one is C. And if you do C1, you will get the front cap and then C2 is the back cap. So you can have them different colors or the same. So nice and simple is you can just drag on another copy and then you've got control over that as well and do C2 on that one. And then it will apply it just to the cap, which is pretty cool. If you're wondering how I'm rotating, if you've forgotten, it's number three. Um, and then for the rounding, so where we're going from the step in towards the cap, that's R. So if we drag and drop again, and then we can do the selection as R1. We'll do just the front. And then again, just for some extra control, we'll have R2 there. And then we've got the back. So we've got this nice complete logo now, or logo, just text really, 3D text but with all different colors, but some nice shortcuts there just to make life nice and simple. And if you went back to the extrude and change things like the type of stepping, it will still keep the changes that you've done thereafter, which is nice, but I'll go back to that half circle. Okay, so from here, of course, you need to do some lighting and make it look a bit more interesting. It's looking a little bit flat there. So you could do things like add lighting to the scene, nice backgrounds, get nice shadows going on. A real quick one, if you wanna have just a bit of shading in there, is you can go into the render preferences, which are here, the render settings, and go to effect and choose ambient occlusion. And this will just add a bit of um, kind of shading onto the curved parts of the surfaces and it adds a bit of interest. So we'll have a look what it looks like, just bang on. And you can see we've already got detailing coming in there. And you could either leave it like that or mess around with some of these settings um, just to change how this is. So I've got a nice bit of detail going there. I could up the accuracy maybe, make it a little more accurate, a little smoother. So I've got just a bit of interest going there and then you can play with these. So you could try going the other way. I think it's probably smaller I want, but we'll try 200. And then we'll try the other way. So we'll try 20. We're looking for the, yeah, maybe it was the right where it was, try 80. You can have more samples, but yeah, that's looking all right to me. So we've got a bit of interest on there just from the ambient occlusion. Um, you could also add all, all kinds of weird and wonderful lighting effects, but that's really for another tutorial. So you've got the output here. Um, one thing that I just want to point out as well is if you want to render this out, sorry, we'll have a look at the render settings again, output. And then there's loads of pre-built in settings, or you can type your own ones in. But for example, if I wanted an 800 by 600, and then I could just check that's still in the frame there, which it is, and then choose on those settings, save. There's different save types I could have, like TIFFs, bitmaps, JPEGs. You can even go out to Photoshop formats and have things on separate layers, like the materials, lighting, reflections, highlights, all those sort of things on separate layers if you want. Um, and then just either choose a save file format there. You can go up to massive output resolution as well. I forgot to mention here, like ridiculously big. Um, or, or use the presets here, but it, it's huge settings. It's, it's, I can't even remember how big you can go, but massive lights, tens of thousands of pixels, I think, now. Um, what else was I going to say? Render settings. That's about it. it. It on render settings that I wanted to mention. So, and then you click this one here, which will render to the picture viewer. Uh, and I actually had another one in there, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, but there we go. So we've got our image, and then just go File, Save As to save it out. And the last thing I wanted to talk about though, one of the really nice ways that Cinema 4D helps you as an artist is the non-linear modeling system, which basically means once I've created this, if I then sit and look at it and think, do you know what, I really wish I had written something else at the start of that, but now I'm gonna lose all that work. Well, not with Cinema 4D. If you go to the text, I can go in here, type in something completely different, click here, and keep all of the changes I've done thereafter. That's non-linear modeling. 
which is really cool. So of course you could save this setup and use it again and again and just change the text. And you're not having to do all of the steps thereafter again, which is really cool. So yeah, we wrote hello and that's it really. Hopefully you've learned a bit about 3D text from this tutorial. And if you did and there's a chance to give us a thumbs up on the uh, movie hosting site that you're seeing, please do. That'd be great. Any comments, very welcome. Thanks very much for watching.